All right, welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We had an overwhelming response to this when we put the email out, and I know some people were having trouble getting the link uh, to work or whatever happened, but we got everybody signed up. Unfortunately, we could only take 100 people over on Zoom and we needed to um, be able to get more people in. So what we decided to do was go ahead and put in a YouTube feed. So there's some of you over on YouTube. I will tell you on YouTube, we have a couple of support staff over there that are going to be able to let you guys uh, chat over on the YouTube feed. And for those of you on Zoom, uh, you are getting it live right here. We have people in the chat here as well because at the end of this, we're going to go ahead and do a short Q&A for those who want to stick around on Zoom. Those on YouTube, you're on YouTube. So we're going to be dumping off the uh, part of the webinar that's going to be the Q&A that we're going to do over here on Zoom. That's for the people who got in early and were able to uh, get in and everything worked. So uh, that's what we're going to do there. Now, Let's move on to some other things. What are we doing today? We are showing the new features, just a few of the new features. We've picked a few of them out uh, to give to you guys today to be able to take a look at and see how they work. We put our latest release out a couple of weeks ago, uh, as you probably are aware of and already know, and we want to show you just a few of the things. That list was exhausting to read through of all of the fix. Uh, fixes we did and all of the new features because there were many things over the course of 10 or 11 months that we had to get worked out for you there. Um, also, I want to say if you are not currently uh, doing this on our YouTube channel, you want to go over and you want to hit like and subscribe on YouTube or even on this video over on YouTube because we have the QCast that is going on there 
Every Monday, we put out a new less than 10 minute video of maybe a lesson in on cue or showing you certain things in on cue that goes along with our LinkedIn page. We have Q tips over on our LinkedIn page, and those uh, things are there to help you. Also, mark it on your calendars. You will be getting an email about this, but mark it on your calendars. April 25th, coming up, April 25th is going to be our quarter two, also known as our Q2 uh, training. That is the only only way that you can get the on cue users certification uh, from on cue. And in order to go through that, you have to um, go ahead and uh, be in one of the training webinars. Now, I've got, um, I don't have everything set on here for people to unmute. I just muted back. I was hearing that in my ear and I didn't know what that was. So uh, hopefully everybody just kind of stays mute. Uh, So we don't have any issues. Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this thing because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Thank you all very much for being on Q users. Thank you for being here. Uh, This thing isn't polished. We're going to do it live for you here today. This isn't a canned presentation. So uh, if there's mess ups, please forgive me. We're going to go over some features. Now, these features, I sat down with the development team and we were all in a meeting and I said, guys, what are your top 10? What do you think are the top 10 that you really like? and are super cool features now that OnQ has that help the users tremendously. And we compiled that list. There are several we could go through, but I would have you here uh, for a couple of hours. Let's go ahead and get on over to my desktop and let's get OnQ launched, okay? Let's get OnQ on here going. We're going to build a case from scratch right now, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. Normally, when I build a case, I build it on my C drive, but today we're going to build this thing. I'm going to call this New Features is going to be the name of our case. And then our location, I am going to my network drive. So I'm actually going to do this just like I'm working on a server in my office. And you can see here now, all I'm going to do is browse out for my new location. And once we get our new location, that's where it's going to be. We're going to click select folder. We're going to build it on our N drive. And the reason that I'm building on my network drive is because we're going to do something with two computers here at the end. Now, this is a brand new case, so I'm going to have to build this case up for you, but there's features in here that go along with building your case up, so we're going to do that, okay? By the way, when we do our switch, take a look over here. I've got a whole nother computer for you sitting over there that we're going to be able to work on and use that. Also, sometimes we may do a little picture-in-picture here between those computers. But either way, let's go ahead and talk about the first thing. Now, these are called notebook separators, Okay, these are called notebook separators. And sometimes when you have notebooks, let's go to the build notebooks tab here. Sometimes when you have notebooks and you create a new one, and let's call this witness one, all right, you've got one notebook and then you want a separator between your notebook. Okay, you want some kind of a separator. What we've done is you can now go to the name and type in five dashes. One, two, three, four, five, click OK, and now you get what's called a notebook separator. You can see it there where it just gives you a line and a notebook. That way you can just kind of separate those notebooks out, maybe so they don't all run together. Okay, so that's something that you definitely want to know about and use. It's just a handy little feature. Put in five dashes and you will be able to get that. Now, I do want to add in a document or two here, and the reason is because I'm going to show you something about our presentation button. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to grab some uh, plaintiff exhibits here. Now, let's go ahead and grab defendant exhibits. Those are easier. They're already labeled and ready to go. Let's drag those in. Let's go ahead and make our delimiter a space. We all know how to do this. We're going to click continue and add these documents in. That's going to add that media over into OnCue after it copies it into the underscore documents folder in the case. Here's what I want to show you. Let's say you're wanting to present this. We're going to hover on the top right corner. We're going to hover hover on the publish button and take a look right under where it says publish F5 being the hotkey. Notice it says present what's in the viewer. So if there's something in here inside of this viewer window, it tells you this is what you're going to publish. Okay, so when you click the publish button, that goes over and publishes. Uh, 
if you don't have anything in here and you use this tool tip, it'll say, hey, you can present D3 from the documents tab in the media bar because you don't have it in the viewer. So if it's not in the viewer, it's not going to present. You can present D3 just like that. Hit the publish button. And just to show you, that came up over on my presentation side over there. You can see where that document came up. So you can publish without something being in the viewer. If you just click on it here, tab over, it tells you what it's going to publish. Now, if we're in the viewer window and we don't have anything selected over here, when we hold on publish, it says nothing is found to present. That way you know if things are or are not working, okay? You know if things are or are not working. Now, that's the tool tip. Let's talk about going in and adding video into on cue now along with transcripts. Watch this. Here's something that we changed for you, okay? I'm going to push F9, refresh my database. Make it a habit now, make it a habit now to go in and actually put your videos and transcripts in the same folder. Put them in the same folder anywhere on your computer that you want. If you have them in the same folder, your MDBs, your CMS, your XML, and then your video files, watch this. Notice that these are all on my desktop, folders, OC files, Back down directory is synchronized transcripts, and here are all my files. Now, these video files correspond with these transcripts. Watch this. If we take all of our transcripts, we drag and drop them in, on cue automatically says now, hey, we found the media in that folder that goes with the transcript. Do you want to go ahead and copy these into the case folder now? Well, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do, because that's going to save me from having to do it manually. We also know that we have a few more files than just one with the video, so we're going to apply to all so that I don't have to answer this question every time. So I'm going to hit copy files and watch this. Now what it will do is it will begin to add your media in, and it shows you on the background tasks. I'm copying these files over to the underscore transcripts folder inside of your case folder. Now realize mine's going a little bit slow today because I'm, I'm working on this network and I've got a slow network here. But the reason they put them in there is because this is where those videos need to be. So see there's Newton done. Now it's putting in Batula. Boom. We click right here and look. This thing will show up on here. There's our thumbnail. We are good to go. Okay. That's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of energy of moving things around and doing things like that. You can add video. You can add transcripts. If they're in the same folder, the transcript is automatically going to pick that up. Okay? It's automatically going to pick that up for you. I think that's a good feature. I think it's something that helps and something that's really good. The next feature I want to show you comes from our audio visuals. And I want to tell you, I need to add an AV file in here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab uh, something from my uh, little backup drive here. Let's see what I've got here on the backup drive. I'm just going to run down and grab a uh, video file here. I don't know what that is. I'm going to call this V1 for video one. Remember, I'm one of those people that likes really short IDs. We want everything to be short so I can easily access it. When we click continue right there, obviously this video file is going to be copied into the AV or audio visuals folder. Once again, inside of the case folder, audio visuals, there's the file. We called it V1. Here it is, guys. Watch this. If you have video now and you are playing your video, you can now use the zoom tool. You click on zoom and there you see you can zoom in on that video while it is playing. All you have to do is double click to get back to your full screen and there is your zoomed video. But hold on a minute. Let me add something else to this for you on this zoom, okay? Let's go ahead and put that back up there and let's cut a clip. We're just going to cut a little video clip here. We're going to start this one right here, and we're going to move this one right here. So that's going to be a five-second clip, I think. Sure thing. We're going to save that one, okay? Now, the next one that we do 
the next one that we do, I'm going to zoom in here. So let me go ahead and zoom before I hit the save button or the start button right here. Okay. So start, boom, we're going to have this stay zoomed through right here. And then we're going to stop it and save it. That's another five second clip. Now watch this. We go ahead and play this clip. And we go ahead and play this clip. Look at this. You can save your clips in a zoomed state. And while they're in a zoomed state and playing, you can double click and back back out. And zoom into somewhere else if you want. Completely up to you. Absolutely wonderful tool for you guys to be able to have. Now, the question comes, at this point, the question comes, well, hey, can we annotate on the video? Can we draw circles, arrows, boxes, and highlights? Right now, no, but do not think that that's not in the pot that we're stirring up right now, okay, over in development. We're talking about it. We're thinking about what to do and how to best do it to not sacrifice any other things in the program, any speed or any reliability. We're thinking about the way to do that now. I got something else for you. Finally, it's here. The ability to now have your video on the screen here, have your video up, and watch this, link documents with regular video. So now you can link your documents to your video files, your AV files, not just depositions anymore. We can now link to AV. So once you link a document to AV, notice you've got your AV clips right here and we've got a document right here. We can zoom in on it. And remember, anything that you do, anything that you do live in the viewer can also be done over on the presentation screen. So as you can see here, we can drop down and all we have to do is unsplit right here and we can take those that video down and have the document up or we could take the document down and have the video up it's either way and that is in the av section that is something new for you now moving on to number four this one's pretty easy but it's one i really like and let me tell you why we've changed a couple of things for you in here i'm going to launch my presentation mode by clicking shift f5 that launches presentation mode for me actually in the on-air mode which I don't care if it's on air or not. That doesn't matter to me. But what I want to tell you about right now is the way to customize your toolbars and not just these toolbars, but your presentation toolbars as well. If you right click on your toolbar, we now have a customize feature that allows you to turn on and off different buttons. So if there are buttons that you don't use on a regular basis, for instance, the 16, nine aspect ratio here, that one takes up, a, you know, it takes up a fair amount of room from the icon. If I don't want that there, I can just right click on the toolbar go to customize turn off aspect ratio let's say that i don't want to hit my on air by accident because i'm not an on air person then i can just toggle on air and notice what's happening here when we do this it's just making that toolbar smaller so if you only want to have three or four tools on that toolbar you can now do that if you want to quickly go back to default you can go to customize toolbar reset to default and that brings everything back. But we're not done with toolbars. Watch this. We're going to go F5 on this. We're going to go ahead and launch this over in our presentation mode. And let me take you over there. If we're in our presentation mode and you click on Control T to show your toolbar, we have the customized toolbar right here. And one of those tools under customized toolbar is right down here at the bottom called notebooks. Okay, it's called notebooks. And notebooks will now show up in your presentation area. So if you have a notebook and you click into it, it will then, if you have documents in it, let me throw some documents into this notebook real quick. We'll shut down presentation. We'll come back here and I'll show you guys how I do this. I pop those out real quick. I'm just going to throw in uh, these three into Witness 1 so that they're there. I'm going to go ahead and launch this again in F5. Go ahead and put you back to presentation. 
show you your toolbar by using control T and then right here under notebooks notice under witness one. Oh, I've got to refresh my database. I am completely sorry about that. Let's come over here and let's do this. Let's F9 refresh this database. Make sure that all these notebooks are there and we've got our documents in them and everything is good to go. I do want to put one of these just out on the end to show you how that works um, so that you can see how that kind of goes there. Let's go ahead now and we'll launch our presentation mode. Let's go F5. Let's go ahead and present. Let's go control T and show that toolbar on our notebooks area. Now notice when we go to witness one, we get the kick out of what documents are inside of there and what you have. Okay. So that's new for you. Also, when you right click on this toolbar, you've got more options about showing your status bar. You can change the status bar placement. We're going to go over that in just a little bit. You can also change the toolbar placement to the bottom. If you like it down there, go ahead and use it down there. And as a matter of fact, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about this status bar position real quick and what the heck is the status bar. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to move my toolbar back up on the top because that's where I'm used to having it. What I'm going to do now is change the status bar. Now, what is the status bar? If we hit shift B, shift B now shows us and you'll see it right here in the top left corner. It's giving us our ID of the document that's up here right now. That's our, uh, that's our status bar. It shows you what is currently on the screen. Okay, you can now go in and right click and choose uh, right down here, status bar placement. And let's say I just want this in the bottom center. I can move it right there to the bottom center of the screen. And you can see right there, D2.1 is right there on the screen. I can still do my document work and everything else I need to do uh, to be able to do that. Okay, so also we have inside of here on your toolbar placement, you have your top center, top right. You can move those anywhere. I'm going to leave it top left. I'm also going to go in here and change the um, toolbar size. I can change the size right here if I want to make this toolbar really small or I need to make it really big so I can see it better. Uh, that's available to you as well. Now. Speaking of this status bar, I want to take you guys back just a minute. I want to take you guys back over here, and I want to show you in your preferences tab now, if you go to your uh, area here inside, go to designations and transcripts or presentation or media bar, audio, video, all those things are in your preferences. Under presentations, we have a really cool area now that you have the option to show your toolbar and show your status bar. Remember, that was where I had the D2.1. You can show your toolbar and your status bar automatically when you launch presentation. You can set your toolbar position right here. You can set your status bar position right here. But here's the ones that I love. You can change the text size and the color and the opacity of the status bar. Also, something really cool when you're playing back video and you want your playback time to show in the status bar, you can now show the remaining or elapsed time. Okay, that's available for you inside of that uh, status bar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this status bar and I'm going to show you what this does. I'm going to make this thing 50 points. I'm going to make it huge and I'm going to change the color to this kind of purple here and I'm just going to set the opacity to 50% so you can see what I mean. I'm going to click OK and that's going to lock in my settings, right? So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and present this again. Go back into my presentation screen, show my toolbar and I'm, I don't even need to show my toolbar. I can just hit shift B and now take a look right up there. You see that? Let's look at that. Look how it's a little dimmed out. So there's no opacity like full. You're not getting the full thing and you're not fully opaque, but notice the opacity is down a little bit. So it's not as bright. Also, look at the size of that thing. That's huge. I don't know why anybody would do that, but if you do, hey, good for you. I'm happy you did it. I just, I don't know why I would ever have it that big. So you could change the status bar style and, pos and position inside of OnQ. Guys, that's 
it's not much, right? It's not much, but it's something that some people just have to have that a certain way. And that's a feature that we put in for you to be able to do that and give you those options. The next one, we're going to remain in our preferences. And this one's for all you geeks out there. Uh, I know I've got a few friends. I, I can't see really who's in the Zoom because I have the support people are taking care of the chat and the techs are taking care of the chat and I can't see who's in here. But I know I've got some friends in here, and I've got some geeky friends, and they're going to love this. Inside of audio and video, notice there's only one area here called playback, but if you go down to your options and you click on show advanced settings, take a look at what we've given you in these advanced settings. When people are exporting video out of on cue. One of the things you can do now is you can do hardware accelerated encoding, okay? And you can choose what encoder your machine supports. Obviously, if it's in this drop-down list, you can use it. And you see we can use NVIDIA, we can use Intel, we can use Windows Media Foundation or let it auto-detect. You can now accelerate your encoding. You can also accelerate your playback. So if you want to use your discrete graphics card, there's no reason to go in and do a bunch of funky changes over in your system settings. You can go ahead and just do it from right here. Remember, to get to these advanced settings, you have to turn on show advanced settings. Okay, so that's just a little tip. A lot of people probably had no idea that that was there. Hey, I've got some video in here and I need to do something real quick. I need to make some uh, really quick designations. And so I'm just going to make some quick designations using the designation wizard. So if you'll just bear with me, I'm going to add a new list here. It's going to be called DL1 for designation list one. I'm going to call this Holbert. Okay, right here. I'm just going to get her transcript. And the reason I need to make some designations is because I need to show you some reporting. So what we're going to do is make some designations here for the plaintiff. Although it defaults to the blue, HL equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there anyway. And I'm going to say page 10, line 1, 2, 11, 2. Uh, Let's do uh, page 15, space, 3, space, uh, 7. Look at that. See, I put in all that junk, and look, it still makes those designations. I'm going to click Save Designations here. Take a look. Boom, there they are. Those are the two that I made. What I'm here to talk about right now is reporting. I'll tell you something new we've got in the reports. Right-click. When we go to our reports now and we create a designation list report, these are the ones that are new here that you want to look at. The indicate edited text is one that is new. You can also do some other things. If you have linked documents to this, uh, you can choose whether or not to show those linked documents. You can also combine your reports into a single file. So you have one report with both types of reports, both the transcript report and the designation report. So notice when I selected transcript report, you'll see everything here that was grayed out will actually highlight for you when you're running a transcript report, including document links. This is one that if you don't want your links or your documents in, turn it off. If you do want your document links to show, keep it on. Indicating edited text, if you go in and edit a part of the transcript that you've pulled some text out because maybe you did a designation that was in the middle of a line, then obviously you would have then an edited area on that transcript to show you that that text has been edited out, okay? You can choose whether or not that's shown on the report. So these two things are... Uh, really, really good. Also on our transcript report, you can highlight the transcript text and you can use the highlighter order or you can use the designation list order for printing out that transcript. Some really cool things. Don't sleep on those reports. Those reports give you a lot of good information. Now, the one question that I think we have been asked in support more than any other question is when or can we add native files to OnQ? And when I say native, I don't just mean Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. I mean a text file. I mean, you know, some other kind of crazy file that you have on your computer. When can we add those to OnQ? Well, 
We compromised with you. We compromised with you. We're going to create a new notebook. We're going to call this one Natives, and we're going to throw it in here and watch this. Native files cannot be added to the media bar. Native files have to be added to a notebook. Let's talk about how these native files work, okay? I'm going to go in here, and they all work the same, okay? You can trust me on this. They all work the same. So I'm going to go into my desktop here, and I'm going to grab under my OC files. I'm going to grab designations here. This is an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to drag and drop this into natives, Okay, drag and drop that into natives. Uh, I'm going to go in here and see. I think I have some here. Yeah, I do. I'm also going to grab a PowerPoint. I'm going to drop it into natives right there. And then let's see. I'm going to grab a text file and I'm going to drop it into the natives folder. So that's all we did. Now, what does this look like in on cue? Notice now you have these natives inside of the notebook along with their icon right there. You're going to be able to see what it is. Now, here is how I would work on it if it were me. Okay, this is how I would do it if it were me. So when I click on this, I want you to read what this says over here so you can see. It says, this is a native file which must be used in its default app. Click the button to view the file, or you may also view it by double-clicking it in the media bar or pressing F5, just like you would launch any other document. But here's what I would do. I would launch this thing, and let me go to a picture-in-picture -picture for you. Notice there's my Excel spreadsheet. So let's say that I'm presenting up here, okay? And I'll tell you what, I'll make this even easier for you. Let me go ahead and take one of these documents up here and throw this down in here. And let me work through this notebook real quick. Let's hit F5. Here we go. All right. You're seeing the presentation side over there. So what I'm going to do now is just click on this uh, Excel file, this native, and I'm going to just push F5. Watch this. Boom. Launches Excel. It's up. Do your Excel work that you need to do in Excel. That means you've got all their tools and all the benefits of having them. Then when you're done, just minimize it and boom, you're right back up to your presentation mode again. You're right back up to whatever needs to be on the screen. Same with PowerPoint. I'm going to double click PowerPoint. Now that came up on my machine. So remember, you want to have this on the same monitor that you're coming up on. But either way, you can see that those natives now go in there. Text file, same thing. Double click it. And when you double click it, it's going to bring up your text file. So it gives you a shortcut and it certainly gives you a way to organize all of your stuff, which is absolutely amazing. All right. Absolutely amazing. Now, we're going to get into the last part of what we have today and what we've got going on. And I will tell you that I am uh, really stoked about this one because I know a lot of you guys work in uh, big war rooms and network environments and things like that. So I'm about to show you the coolest one, and that is when you build on a server or you're on a NAS drive or you're on some type of shared drive. Notice I did not say the cloud. I didn't say Dropbox or any of that, but when you're actually on a true server or a NAS, here we go. Watch this. So you see this case we have right here? Everybody see this case? What I'm going to do is go over to another computer over here. I'm connected to another computer right here, and I'm going to go ahead and launch on queue on this computer for you. And what we're going to do is you're going to see how it interacts with a database. So what I'm going to do is just go open, and that's going to take me to my network on queue cases. Here it is. New features is the case I created today. Select folder. And as you can see, we have all of the same stuff inside of here, including our designations that we made right here. Everything's in the case, right? Everybody knows how to do that, but watch this. This is going to be, this is insane. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine so that you can be able to hear this. I'm going to go over to my machine right now. And actually, yeah, I'll just go to mine. Okay, here I am on my machine. Now watch. I'm going to tune these two designations. Now, we have this case open in both places. One of them, the one on the bottom right, is sitting on a document. I'm over here in the designation editor. 
Unfortunately, I don't have anybody else that's sitting here in the studio with me to be able to work on that one and show you at the same time. But I remember back in on Q3 when Ryan Connect and I did this on YouTube Live showing how this would work, and we used what's called a zero-tier network. He was in New Jersey, and I was here. It was crazy. Anyway, I digress. Let's go ahead right now, and let's tune these designations, okay? So we're going to take this one, and I don't like this designation because, as you can see here, if we look at this designation, it starts in the middle of a of a uh, question here. It's actually at the end of it. So what I'm going to do is just update this. So watch how easy I do this. I can just select this text, right-click, and choose, edit, start, and stop to selection. Boom, now I'm good. Now watch, I'm going to tune it. Listen. And when you... All right, there's the first one. Let's go to the end. Listen. Things like that. And things like that. Oh, after they're done testing. So I'm going to add another line here. So it needs to end at 11. Let me move this over. 11 line three instead of two. Boom, there it is. So now after they're done testing. After they're done testing. Okay, there it is. Save that. Now watch this. Let's switch over to the other computer. Ready? Boom. You see that? It automatically updated over there. Automatically. I didn't have to push F5. I didn't have to refresh my database. I didn't have to close and reopen. I did not have to do a thing over on that computer. Let me show you. Let me do it in picture in picture. Okay? Actually, you know what? We'll do it on the presentation one. So let me go over here. Watch this. I'm going to take this document right here that I'm in, this blue sky. I'm going to go to page two. I'm going to do a call out on this thing. So let's do call out. Let's do highlight, and let's save it, okay? We're just going to save this right here in the save, right? Boom, done, saved. There it is. Now, let's go back over to my machine real quick. Real quick, we're back over to my machine and watch. There it is. So, everything you do automatically comes across. Let's see if I can do it picture in picture, and you can see it happen real time. Uh, let's work on a D3 catalog and let's do document number two, okay? So over here on this machine, I will drop it down to D3 catalog and I'll just leave it right on this one or actually I'll F9 over here and I'll just leave this open on D3 catalog. Now I'm going to do document number two on my machine, okay? So watch close. Actually, you know what? I'll make it big for you. I'll make it bigger so you can see it actually happen live. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a call out on this screen. So we're going to do a quick call out here. All right. There's your call out, and I'm going to save that. Now, boom, saved on my machine. Watch over on the other machine. Now, it depends on how fast your network goes. Boom. See it? Do you see it just come up? There it is right there. Let me get my mouse over there. Look at that. Look. <laughs> I love it, guys. I love it because it gives you the ability to work together on a network on some kind of server and you can get the benefits of this without being able to go in and refresh or do something like that, okay? That makes it um, a little bit easier for you, all right? So looking where we are right now, those are the features. There's, of course, there's many, many more. I can't even tell you how many more there are because if you go look at the sheet, uh, by the way, if you don't know about the version history, you can click right here. You can go to version history. And what this will do is this will take you into the build notes. And when you look at the build notes for, for these things, it is absolutely insane. I mean, look at this thing. This was the original one that came out. Notice we've done some hot fixes since then. But take a look at this. I mean, just broken down on all the new features and the fixed features, it is absolutely amazing to be able to use this thing and do this. And so um, I, I am just, I, I cannot say enough about how happy we are that you, the users, let us into uh, this area we are now in development because it was you, the users, who drove the development. You can go back and watch. I think, I'm not sure what episode it is. It may be episode five or six uh, on the QCast with Eric Pubitz where Eric kind of told us a little bit of what's coming and where we're going and that user development is definitely uh, what drove us. Another thing I need to mention about the... Um, networking, working together. If you're working with somebody and they're on 
document D1, page one, and you're on D1, page one, uh, that's not going to work. So you can't be on the same thing at the same time in a network, if that makes sense, because the database doesn't know who to assign the changes to. We've always just kind of said, you know, it's just not a good thing to do. Just try not to do that. You know, just go in and say, hey, um, I'm not going to work on this at the same time as you're going to work on this, that particular document. Uh, and that'll make it pretty easy for you. Now, I just decided to do something. It's too much of a hassle, really, for me to, not a hassle, but I got to click three buttons to close down the YouTube feed. I know that it was tough for people to get in. I know it was hard for people to get into the uh, webinar today because you had to click fast and you had to get in fast and a lot of you got wait listed and then you had to go to the YouTube feed. Hello, YouTube. I see you guys out there. Listen, we're going to go ahead and do a Q&A today. I wasn't going to do one, but we're going to do a Q&A today where those of you that are in the Zoom feed right now, what you can do is you can unmute yourself. When you unmute, you can ask a question. Now, don't everybody talk at once and give us an opportunity, but you YouTube people that are watching on YouTube right now, hey, please like and subscribe to our channel. You're already there, okay? You people on YouTube, we're going to go ahead and stream this for you. We're going to keep this thing running with the Q&A. So you're going to get it over there on YouTube. I just, I'm in a generous mood today. And, and this is going to stay on YouTube. So if you miss something, go like and subscribe to our channel and you'll be able to go see everything that's there. That's all free content out there on YouTube, folks. We don't have anything paid out there. That's all free content for you to be able to have. Okay, and so go out there, hit that YouTube. You'll be able to rewatch this in case you miss something. We're just going to go ahead and leave it up. So right now, what I want to do and realize I can't see your videos, but I can finally see the chat screen here. If you've got a question you want to ask uh, somebody here at support, notice that we've got a lot of people here uh, that are with our support team. We've got Max Bow, John Morales, Eddie Fisher, Donnie Guillory, Ryan Connect, and myself, and we'll be glad to answer what we can for you. Those of you on YouTube, I'm sorry you're not going to be able to interact with us, but when we have another one of these, try to get in there. Uh, we are limited by what Zoom lets us have. So anybody that has a question, go ahead and unmute. I'll see you unmute, and I'll call on you, and uh, we can go ahead and have a little discussion here about any questions that you might have about what we just covered on the webinar or any questions in general that you have. It's a good day outside. Anybody have anything they want to do, let me make sure that you guys are able to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, you can unmute yourself. So anybody have a question? All right. Let's start with, uh, Ryan Williams, Ryan, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, I may have missed it, but I've had a few instances where I've had to, um, actually sync a video exhibit with a deposition. Can you think video exhibits with a deposition? Absolutely. So what we call that is link docs to video. This is the link docs to video area right here. And this is where you can take uh, any type of a uh, designation that you have and you can grab the document right here and you can drag, drop it on and boom, it's linked. So that works for you. I'm, I'm I'm specifically asking about video. Oh, yeah. I showed video. you that as well today. You may have missed I'm it. Sorry, and that's okay. No, that's okay, brother. We're glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you were paying attention to this thing. Yes, sir. Watch this. You can go in right here. You can't necessarily link it, but what you can do is you can split screen it and then save that clip. So watch okay. this. Let's go to V1 right here. Let's go V1.1, right? Let's go ahead and make a uh, – I'm going to – put with v1.1 right here i'm going to split it and i'm going to put a document up okay i'm going to put a document up right there okay there it is now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start my designation and i'm going to stop my i call it a designation but this is a clip and then i'm going to make that right there and then i'm going to go right here and notice this little right. yellow thing right there it shows you you have those locked together so now when i go let's just go to this clip and then look at this clip it's already saved like that. So you can indeed link. Nice. All right. And that works with depositions as well. I well, deposition. Yeah. Depositions been working for a while. Yeah. That's, that's everybody's oh, been okay. doing that a oh, long right. time. That's the one I showed you first. Ryan, go ahead. 
Rob, he was asking about linking AV files to deposition video. Correct. Oh, no, we don't do that. You don't run two videos at a time right now. I, I am so sorry that I did not understand your question. You got to okay. forgive me, sir. Uh, I, I am sorry about that. But Ryan, that is not at this time, but I can tell you that it has been, and, and Ryan can probably confirm this, that's something that's been uh, in the research bin. Okay, got it. Thank oh, you. Okay, so I'm sorry, Ryan. Daryl X-Line, you're next. Go ahead. Hey, um, I had already asked in chat if the uh, network path had to be identical for both of the users. No. And they don't. No, no, but they're going to be. Why? Why? Well, no, I mean, if if if, if uh, one person has the, the the server mapped as their N drive and someone else has it mapped as their S drive, yeah, that's a drive letter. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, okay. because and we then, don't uh, use because we don't use volume IDs. Okay, uh, it so uh, uses a, a server path. It's going to use a directory or, path. Yeah, it's going to use a directory okay. path, but it's certainly not looking to. Um, it's not looking to the drive letter to do anything. Okay. Nor is Secondary it... question is if my server is a cloud server uh, using like box drive or, or something like that, where it's mapped into my user folder right. as a subfolder, right. uh, can we do share over that as well? I am not the person to comment on that particular question uh, because a, I don't know the answer. B, if the answer is yes, I don't know the best practice. And I don't know that in that type of a situation, you're giving me a little bit of a one-off. And so in that type of a situation, I don't know what the best way to do that would be, right? So, and I don't know if anybody in any of the support that are in here know that, Um I, I, I hearken to Ryan on this one to ask that question because I, I, I'm not sure that that would be either A, a best practice, or B, something that would work properly. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure either just because we tend to shy away from using um, drives like Dropbox or Box or shared drives like that that aren't local. Um, so we certainly haven't tested it. Um, to know if you can map, you know, to work on it after you've mapped the drives. Um, so I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, because I know I, I, I typically work on Box for my active folder. Uh, it has a local version, and then it syncs in the background to the cloud. Well, um, one of the things that I could tell you is this, Daryl, and I think I think this goes for everybody here, and that is, you know, one of the things we have in our preferences, as you can see here, are the file extensions that we take. You've got your images, your video, and your audio. These files are guaranteed to work, right? Because these files are guaranteed to go in and we've tested them, we've used them, they work. But if you have a file, let's say it's called a, a .sss file, and you want to see if it works, drag it in and see if it works, right? So there are people out there that use on cue off-label, and uh, I love when they do that. I love hearing those stories. And so my recommendation would be see if it works for you. And if it does, then make it work. It's certainly not something that we would you know, recommend or even know where to begin with what it is you're doing in your workflow. But everybody's workflow is different. And that's what we wanted on cue to be. We wanted on cue to be something where people with different workflows could still work. So I would give it a try, Daryl, and Rob, then report yeah. back to me. Rob. Yeah. I'm, I'm being told that it will not work. And it is the syncing to the cloud part of it that will not work. There it is. Because as long as it's syncing to the cloud, it's not going to work because you're going to have, you know, conflicted versions of it if you have multiple users trying to access it. Okay. I mean, you know, someday, hopefully, maybe. I mean, there's so much stuff in our pipeline. Uh, Eric can tell you it's it's posters and posters and posters of charts and graphs and everything. So, um, you know, it, that may be something we're able to do. But right now, you know, if I'm on, you know, fiber and you're on, you know, 33, six dial up, we're going to have a problem. 
So um, there you have it. All right, Daryl, thank you very much for your question. Anybody else, go ahead and unmute. All you have to do is unmute. I'll see you unmute. We'll be glad to answer your question. Does not matter what it is. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and ask. We'll try to answer it. If I don't get a question or two in the next uh, couple of minutes, then what I will do is uh, go ahead and shut this thing down for the day. Anybody else have anything? Uh, all right. Uh, is that is that Joey Watson? Yeah, hey, yeah, Rob. Yeah, it is. Hey, brother. How you doing? <laughs> I think I caught something on LinkedIn the other day about uh, changing uh, existing highlight colors. Could you run through that real quick? Changing existing highlight colors, sure. Uh, uh, things that are already ha- highlighted. Uh, wait a minute. Say that again. Uh, I, I thought I caught something briefly about if you have something uh, already highlighted uh, instead of re-highlighting it in a different color. Oh, yeah, yeah, change. yeah. Yeah, I'll show you that, brother. All right, so basically um, what we do here is if you go in and you've got uh, this Holbert designation right here, uh, if, I, if I have this, notice this designation right now is a plaintiff designation because it has the blue thing. Uh, if you right-click on the designation you can go down and you can go down to assign highlighter and just choose boom so now that one's in red it's a defendant's designation or whatever oh yeah i got that uh but i, th- I think it was like on a document like a hot oh a you're talking about the colorized feature that we did on the qcast yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so let me let me let me go ahead and show you something here real quick let me uh go here to uh youtube.com and if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, let's go to our YouTube channel, and you look through our QCast videos down here, it's this video right here called QCast 4. It's called Colorize. And that walks you through how to do it, how to use it, how to do everything. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, man, no problem. Okay, let's go with uh, next one was Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey. <laughs> B, 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 BWA in the house. Yes, sir. That's us. And then, um, mine's a pretty quick question, a little techie, but um, obviously, you know, your your video exporter is much better than everything else out there. Um, well, not, thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Oh, yeah, Thank course. you. So, was it not implementing any type of hardware acceleration beforehand, even if we had NVIDIA um, uh, graphics cards and stuff like that? Or was it, is this just uh, going to be much quicker now because we're actually able to pull from the all, all like the the kudos and stuff well i think anytime you have an encoder decoder on your machine um windows does a pretty good job of saying here's the accelerator we want to use here's the mode we need to be in but as you know in our industry that doesn't always work and so uh what we did was we said hey you know you can go in and you can manually set your computer to use your discrete graphics card all the time. And I really wish, I really wish that Nancy Schlafer was in this room. I think she may be hanging out on the YouTube, but Nancy is, is one of our best at understanding the problems with graphic cards and why these do this and why these do this. And one of the things we wanted to do was be able to force the encoder to use the, the hardware acceleration But we wanted the user to not have to force the rest of their machine or force the whole program to use it to slow things down, right? Yeah. So you know if you're using hardware acceleration, you're going to get better quality and sometimes more speed. So that's why we put that in there to give you the ability to do that. I do appreciate and thank you for your comment about the encoder. When we were building that, Um, it, it was a lot of tries and a lot of things we were doing to get that built right. But, you know, everything is based on what TMPEG Inc or OptiBase or, or those guys, Digital Rapids were all doing back in the day, the way you export. But man, there's such a hodgepodge of videos. And as you know, all the Zoom videos that came up during it, during COVID, those are now, those cases are now starting to go to trial. So a lot of people are seeing a lot of these encoded by zoom videos that are like 23 frames per second so they're a little off and then they're they're hard to encode they're hard to transcode we took that into consideration too when we built the encoder and then you need some type of hardware to be able to really flesh that encoder out and get to the meat of the of the gop right the group of pictures so. yeah for sure and I, one more quick thing um and this sounds like might be more steered towards nancy like you said 
Um, but uh, would you recommend staying with the game ready drivers for something like Nvidia or doing the studio drivers whenever those new drivers come out? I've, much I've, I've always used the game ready drivers. Now I have a few machines. The one right back there, back there is a razor, uh, that I've had a little while that one. Um, I, I just use the Nvidia drivers. The machine that I'm on right now is a desktop I've always just used the game ready drivers and I've never had a problem because I'm not, right. I'm not doing anything Hollywood out of on cue. So, you know, and that, that's the problem too, with running two videos side by side, right? Who's, who's getting the hardware, <laughs> who's yep. getting the acceleration. I mean, I got to choose who I'm going to be rooting for on race day and doing that's just a weird thing. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Anybody else? Okay, there we've got an unmute from, uh, I don't know if it's Andrea or Andrea, but I'll take Andrea. How are you? Good, Rob. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, my question is, I have one laptop that is in the old version of OnQ, and I have one laptop that's in the new version of OnQ. Some of my old version of OnQ transcripts are not working in the new version. Is there a fix? Well, no, <laughs> um, you get, so you get the XML out of, out of, uh, on Q3, you can export your transcripts to XML, right? And that XML file should be able to be brought in, but if it doesn't work now, when you say transcripts, do you mean actually putting the transcript in on cue or your designations that are in your transcript? Actually, I can't see the transcript in on cue. In the version what four. kind of file is it that you're trying to bring in there? Um, Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, what exactly is it that you mean by they aren't working? So when I open a case that I've already built in OnQ3, the latest version, um, into the new version, uh, I'm not able to see the transcripts and the designations. Not all of them, just some of them. And I haven't really been able to pinpoint if it's a... Do me a favor on this one, um, if if you would, Andrea. Do me a favor. Email support at onqtech.com and let these guys get a hold of that. That's the best support team on the planet right there. Let these guys get a hold of that and 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 make sure you're you're where you need to be. Let's okay, go. Great. Let's Thank let's you. go ahead and do that. I I wish that were something that was a known bug and we could get to. So, all right, my man Corey Allen, what's going on, brother? Hey, Rob. Thanks for uh, all this info. Just a if you can share, what are the top one or two features you're looking forward to in the next uh, next version? You mentioned you guys have hundreds in the pipeline. What are the top one or two that you can share? Um, the Mac version, native Mac version of the software is one. It should make a lot of people smile. So I'm looking for that. Uh, I'm also looking forward to some new um, sync utilities, um, and I'm looking forward to some companion applications to uh, on Q. Not, you know, not like a full suite of software. That's not what we're talking about. You know, it's not like a, you know, we don't want to be all things to all people. That's not what we've ever tried to do. We are a presentation tool. That is what we do. But there are other tools that can complement presentation tools. For instance, bulk rename utility comp, you know, was a complementing tool to all of us for years because it's all we had. And so you use it outside. So uh, those are those are the ones. As far as features in the program, there's, there's several things that I know uh, Nancy and Eric have really been working on when it comes to uh, still more things with having to do with split screens and, and things like that. Um, and a lot more video support. I mean, we support a lot right now, but a lot more. I'd also like to see the export of video. Um, it will get better as the technology gets better. And so those are the things I'm looking for. And if I seem like, I, I hope Corey, Corey's a longtime friend of OnQ folks, but I hope, uh, Corey that, uh, and a longtime 
personal friend of mine. But uh, I hope that I, I don't seem like I'm dodging that question because I'm not. But at the same time, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't even seen all of the pipeline. So um, there's probably something on there that I would probably add to. No, that was great. I know we still have at least one person in our, our company using, I think, Trial Director 5 on a Mac in parallel. So I think once he can start using on Q on, uh, on a Mac, it's going to make him very happy. Well, and I, I and look, uh, f- read my lips. I have no date on this. We have no time on this. The only thing I can tell you is I have laid eyes on a prototype. So... I have laid eyes on a prototype. And then other than that, I'm, I, I have no idea what, when that's going to be. So I don't, hopefully there's not a lot of emails. Hey, Rob Hilt said you're releasing a Mac version. When are you releasing it? I don't need that. <laughs> Get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, we're live on YouTube, aren't we? No. Hey, YouTubers, I'm still out there. Listen, I wish you guys could have gotten into this thing. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing these. I really do. I love this program, folks. Y'all, I'm sure know that, uh, that, you know, I, I bleed purple. And so uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. Anybody else have a question before I get out of here? I don't want anybody to uh, uh, not have not been heard. And you know what? I see somebody in here. Carl Gathers is in this thing. And Carl uh, was the tech for the plaintiffs during plaintiff steering committee during the BP oil spill trial. And I haven't seen his name in years. Good to see you here, Carl. Thank you for coming in. I certainly appreciate it, my friend. How you doing, Rob? Man, I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, it's good to see you, buddy. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else have anything they want to ask? Anything they want to say? All right. Man, Rob Legospi was here, too. Hey, Rob. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much. This has been uh, a live deal for you. I hope that everybody enjoyed it. I hope we were able to give you kind of what you were looking for. And hey, at least it was worth what you paid for it. It was free, right? Thank you guys so much. We'll see you the next time we do this. We'll see you at a training on April 25th, or we'll see you out on the QCast on the YouTube channel. Thank you all so, so very much.